No prescriptions, no medicines, no injections. That's the future of medicine, according to Dr. Kevin Tracy, president of the Feinstein Institute for Medical Research, who says that implantable electronic devices may eventually replace everyday medications and cure disease. His research is leading us into the age of bioelectronic medicine. Imagine a future where disease is treated without the use of drugs, eliminating expensive pharmaceuticals and their potential side effects. Imagine a future where illness can be treated with a small implantable device, a device that can cure you with simple electrical signals. It's not science fiction. The future is closer than you think. In fact, it already exists in the world of research. Dr. Kevin Tracy is at the forefront of this new age of medicine, leading the charge in a field known as bioelectronic medicine. And Dr. Tracy's most recent discovery has the potential to revolutionize medicine as we know it. Dr. Tracy has developed a way to treat a range of diseases impacting the immune system by implanting a small device on a patient's nerve. The nerve is then stimulating, telling the human body to make natural chemicals needed to treat an illness. The device is a targeted treatment, eliminating the need to take drugs. Patients are also spared harmful side effects and reoccurring costs that normally come with pharmaceutical treatments. Recent clinical trials using bioelectronic devices have been completed in Europe, successfully treating patients suffering from rheumatoid arthritis, offering them, and many other patients, hope. This is truly incredible stuff. It is an exciting time to be working in healthcare and medicine. I am pleased to introduce Dr. Kevin Tracy, President and CEO of the Feinstein Institute for Medical Research. Welcome, Dr. Tracy. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me. So this, this moment in time, this place that you come in to join us, um, bioelectronic medicine, which I really want to talk about, I've read a lot about your story, and I really want you to just tell us how you came to where you are today. So where I am today is I'm a neurosurgeon who studies inflammation. And it's an unusual combination, uh, but I was influenced as a young child to be a neurosurgeon when my mother died of a brain tumor when I was in first grade. And developed an interest in inflammation when I was training to be a neurosurgeon. Um, as, a, as a resident in neurosurgery, I took care of a patient named Janice who was 11 months old. And she died in my arms from... Uh, excessive inflammation, uncontrolled inflammation in her body. And her death haunted me for years and uh, really drove me to, to the laboratory to understand mechanisms of, um, of inflammation and, and how, how could they possibly be put under control in a therapeutic way. I think that um, there are those moments in our lives, in our careers that affect us and Certainly, we are benefiting from your tragedy. And I, I think that what you've really found is um, this whole concept of inflammation and really how much it's making a difference. So can you tell us a little bit about bioelectronic medicine, the vagus nerve, the inflammatory process, all of this? So the idea of bioelectronic medicine is making devices that can be used instead of drugs. And some of these devices can be very small and very precise and implanted once and prevent the need for taking drugs or, or using drugs for many, many years. But it's based on the nervous system. Bioelectronic devices are based on the coming together of three fields. Um, molecular medicine, the basis of understanding how disease is caused. Neurophysiology, understanding how nerves signal and work. and Biomedical engineering, the ability to make devices to control nerves to control disease. So what you've really been looking at specifically is the vagus nerve and how the vagus nerve decreases inflammation in the body. Yes, we, we, we made that discovery for a role of the vagus nerve in decreasing inflammation in the body. We made the discovery by accident. We had developed a, a molecule which we called 1493 and we're studying this molecule in experimental models of stroke. And what we found was that when we put 1493 into the brain, it was beneficial in, in stroke, but as we expected, but as we didn't expect, surprisingly, 
putting 1493 in the brain also turned off inflammation elsewhere in the body, in the spleen, in the liver. And this was a, a shock. This was not expected. Uh, and uh, after many um, months, months and then years of work, what we understood was that the, the, the drug, 1493, was turning on electrical signals in the vagus nerve, which is, which is the nerve that leaves the, the, the brain here, near the base of the skull, and travels here along the carotid artery. Right behind the carotid artery in the neck. So turning this nerve on, it's like turning the brakes on a car on. It turns off the inflammation in the body's organs. Put the brakes on and it stops inflammation. Turn on the vagus nerve and it stops inflammation. Got it. Exactly. So you brought with you today the device to do this. Yes. So up, up until now, we've been experimenting with different electrodes that can turn on the vagus nerve to block inflammation in arthritis, in inflammatory bowel disease, in sepsis, the inflammation problem that Janice had, and in other conditions of excessive inflammation. And what I'm holding here is, is a, a, a prototype of a future device, which uh, is in the process of being made by uh, Dr. Mike Faltes, a uh, biomedical engineer at Set Point Medical in California. And what you see here is uh, the white, it will, will be the battery, uh, is the battery. The, the base of the device here it has the computer chips and electronics, and here, uh, the silver leads are what touch the nerve. And so putting those, putting the device on the nerve allows the activity of the nerve to be put mm -hmm. under the control of the computer. And it stimulates the vagus nerve to shut off the inflammation the computer, through that. Yes, the computer in this device stimulates the vagus nerve to turn off inflammation in the body. That's right. And you think if you had that for Janice, it would have changed her outcome? I don't know, uh, but maybe. So tell us about the trials that are going on now. So um, currently, um, there have been two trials of rheumatoid arthritis in Europe uh, in patients that had no other medical options for their treatment. Mm -hmm. And in both trials, between two-thirds and three-quarters of the patients experienced a significant remission, a significant benefit from having uh, a vagus nerve stimulator implanted. Not, not this device, uh, a larger device that was put uh, under the clavicle and then tunneled uh, uh, over to the vagus nerve in the neck. Uh, what disease process were they undergoing? So the first trials uh, have been done in rheumatoid arthritis. And, and rheumatoid arthritis is not you know, the pain in your knee that you get from an old injury. Rheumatoid arthritis is a devastating uh, systemic illness that affects the joints and the the, the, the brain and the vascular system. And so these patients were really suffering. And um, to, 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 for me to meet the first patient in Bosnia, who was a beneficiary of this uh, treatment, was really a, a life-changing experience for me. Um, he uh, told me that he had previously been basically housebound in pain, unable to play with his children, go outside, or even play ping pong, his, one of his passions. And within weeks, uh, when I met him about um, three months after the surgery, uh, within weeks he was better and uh, began playing ping pong again. And a few weeks after that, he felt so good, uh, he went outside and played tennis and hurt his knee. Oh my gosh. So his doctors had to tell him, this, 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 this guy who had been um, restricted to the couch, um, his doctors had to warn him to, to take it easy. So just to clarify, when you say surgery, it's really just getting this device in to stimulate the vagus nerve. But once that happened, that's, I mean, that's startling within weeks that there was such a huge difference. Yes, the current version of vagus nerve stimulating devices requires an, an incision in the chest uh, to hold the device and a second incision for the lead to be placed on the nerve. Future um, versions of these devices, um, I believe, like this one, um, and perhaps some that will even be smaller uh, someday, uh, may not require uh, two incisions. They may require no incisions. They may be able to be implanted um, through um, trocars or needles. That would be amazing. Are there any side effects? So all treatments have some side effects. Um, the side effects of vagus nerve stimulation to treat inflammatory disease will um, be identified as much larger clinical trials are performed. Um, what we know in general about 
The side effects of nerve stimulation are that they are fairly limited. Um, there's always the risk of infection or damage to the nerve during the surgery, but those risks are quite small. And we were talking, you know, when we look at the medication, when we look at the disease process, and we look at a little implantation of this amazing device, it, the risk-benefit ratio certainly adds in favor of this. Yeah, knowing for sure what the risk-benefit ratio will be will require larger trials, but um, what we do know today is that the drugs that are used to treat rheumatoid arthritis are extremely um, expensive. They only uh, they can be as much as twenty or thirty thousand dollars per year. Yeah. They only work in about half of the patients, sometimes less. And um, some of these drugs can be dangerous. Some Serious of these drugs have black box warnings. So the hope is that uh, as our knowledge of, of, of bioelectronic medicine increases, that we should be able to design specific chips targeting specific nerves for individual patients that will be, as you said, uh, hopefully safer and uh, perhaps even less expensive uh, and certainly more effective than the available treatments. I know everyone at home is asking the question, when can I get it? Is there access to it? Will my insurance company cover it? All of those things and what can we, what can we say about that? All of those uh, answers will come from the clinical trial uh, approval process, which will take place over the next several years. Um, currently, the clinical trials that are uh, scheduled or are ongoing are in Europe. Uh, but in the future, um, I certainly hope that uh, these devices will be available for everybody. Only time will tell. This is absolutely unbelievable. It's groundbreaking. This is a new era of medicine. I, I think this is... There's a future in so many different fields here, and I am honored to be talking to you today. So thank you so much for being here. You're welcome. Thank you for having me on the show.